Hello, and welcome to Weekend Projects, a Make Magazine video podcast. I'm Bree Pettis, your host, and every week I bring you a project that you can make over the weekend. This weekend's project is bigger than a weekend. In fact, I've been working on this project for a little over a month on and off, and I've had to bring in some friends to help me out. I am working on a drawing robot, a robot that will take a picture, turn it into some code, and then spit it out to a robot, which will then draw it on a piece of paper. I saw one of these in the Make 07, the most recent issue of Make Magazine, and I couldn't resist it. I like, I don't know, maybe it's like a maker love at first sight when you see something and you have to have it and you have to make it. Well, that's how it was with this project. So today I'm gonna go over and we're gonna take a look at some uh, parts that you'll need to get, some materials, and then we'll take a look at some of the tools that you need if you're gonna be messing around with the robotics. I'm also gonna drag my friends in and have them teach you a little bit about what they're working on on this project. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about the materials. You can get a lot of materials you need by recycling old technology. Just take it apart, rip it out, and keep it on hand for projects. This is a stepper motor out of a printer. It's also really handy to have raw materials on hand for when you need to make something up from scratch. Aluminum plate, aluminum rods, aluminum angles and threads. These kind of things are really handy when you need to make stuff up right on the spot. It's good to have these in your workshop. Having the right tool for the job makes the whole thing go so much smoother. You're going to need lots of the basic tools like screwdrivers and wrenches and wire cutters and wire strippers. One of the nice things to have that we found is a ruler. I love this ruler. It's metal. It's, it measures down to the hundredth of an inch and it's so great for measuring things so you know how long to cut something or you can find out how far something goes. Uh, another handy thing is a notebook that you can put everything in so that you've, when you make a wiring diagram, it's in your notebook and you can know that which wire goes to what terminal. A Dremel doesn't hurt and a multimeter is really handy. The thing you're going to use this for mostly is toning things out. And the way you do that is you want to find out if two things are connected. And so you touch these to the both ends and if it makes that sound, they're connected. All right, when we first picked this thing up, it was just a skeleton and muscles. And by that, I mean there's, there was a chassis and the motor. There were no electronics. How did we flesh this thing out? Well, we started off uh, by determining what all we had on here, which was basically three stepper motors and I guess, what did it work out to be, four, four limit switches? Yeah. And so we had to figure out how to read from limit switches and control the motors. So what you see here is the result of a bunch of you know, breadboard or, or test versions that we wired up. Um, this is our final, you know, cabling. It's not always looked this pretty. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> doesn't look this pretty all the time. And uh, effectively, the, the make microcontroller reads from the limit switches and, and also controls um, step and direction pulses to the motor controllers that actually drive the mechanics around. So. And these are here because we couldn't drive enough power to the stepper motor, so the, the signals go to these drivers, which then add a bunch of current so that we can run the, drive, the motors there. All right, so that's just a little tour of the robot we've got here. So what I'm doing is, so the project takes pictures of people, and we need to turn pictures into an image that a pen will be able to draw in a reasonable number of steps. So we're using software that exists um, that other people have written that convert pretty pictures of people into black and white images. And now we're going to try to find a way to encode that as a number, a series of lines that will be able to be drawn easily by the robot. Basically, yeah, my job is to write the code that converts the X, Y positions on the lines uh, into uh, the proper order of motor controls so that uh, the lines are reasonably smooth and that the uh, motor doesn't accelerate or the a pen doesn't accelerate or decelerate too fast uh, and thus miss steps. So that's pretty much what I'm working on. I'm working on the software for the Drawbot project. We're using the Make Controller and Coding in C and basically what we're doing is moving in three different axes X, Y, and Z by driving the stepper motors using the Make Controller. And that's what we got going on here. Okay, so uh, we've made a lot of progress tonight. It's been, uh, been pretty incredible to get some help uh, from some folks working on the software side of things, so uh, we get to see all the mechanics come alive and see how precise or imprecise this thing really is, so um, that's been pretty exciting. We basically have it, uh, have it drawing a, a prefab shape that's just baked right into the firmware on the 
make controllers, so we can just turn this thing on and, and it starts drawing, which is, which is pretty exciting to have this thing uh, come alive after it just being this dormant thing with lots of solder, blood, sweat, and tears put into it. So here we go. So at this point, um, it's basically just executing a series of positions and drawing out a star shape on the sheet of paper. So we still have some tweaks to do um, with the motor software and on the leveling of the device to make sure we're, our pen is uniform across the surface of the paper. You know, um, a traditional printer you know, has the advantages of having a head right next to the sheet of paper and, and the rollers right there, so it's got a pretty consistent surface to work with. Here we have uh, a separate actuator on Z and you know, a system that's really not designed to, to do what we're making it do. So, um, with some slight, slight mods and some tweaking, I think we'll get some really good output out of it. So, when you're working on a project like this, wires go everywhere, you've, and you've got to organize them. There's a couple of ways to do this. You could wrap some uh, wrap plastic around it, or you could use shrink wrap or zip ties. But I've got one idea for you that I think works really well. What you do is you go ahead and you put the wires in a an electric drill here and you go ahead and you go ahead and you pull it tight and you wind it up. Now an important detail is that when you're all done you rewind it back a little bit otherwise it all coils up and goes crazy. Oh yeah this looks good. Let's see what we got here. Yep we've got a great wire here that's really pretty as well as being very well organized. I'm really proud of this straw bot. It works well. Right now it's just drawing a star, but it's going to draw some really amazing things soon. Now I could not have done this alone. A key component to this project was having friends who are really smart and who are into robotics. I recommend if you're getting into robotics that you find a community of people who are also into robotics because there's a lot of wisdom out there and a lot of people who know a lot of things who will help you out in your project. Uh, if you have a dork bot in your neighborhood or a robotics association, it's worth checking out. Okay, I'm Bree Pettis and you've watched another Weekend Projects. I can't wait to see the robot projects that you work on. When you do, make sure to drop me a line at Bree at MakeScene.com or go ahead and put pictures of it up on the Make Flickr pool. Okay, go out there, build some robots and have a great weekend.